in the air today decides the fate of nations. Air power must be ours where the cause of peace dictates. In the sky over Hong Kong, over the sands of the Middle East. Only a little while ago, air power helped keep the peace of Europe by bringing salvation to Berlin. across the world to Asia, where those who fight terrorists in Malaya must be supplied by air. History comes roaring closer with the Australian meteors at work for the United Nations over Korea. The nerve center of the RAF is in London, in the Air Ministry in Whitehall, where the Air Council meets to say when and where and how. Secretary of State for Air, the Chief of the Air Staff, and other members of the Air Council meet to decide policy. Britain's survival lies in the sea lanes and the traffic that flows along them. Today, war has spread to the third dimension, and command of the sea entails command of the air above it. Coastal command must scan the skies and search the seas. Their eyes reach further than ever in history. We now have the Shackleton Long Range Reconnaissance Aircraft, flying further and staying aloft longer than any of her predecessors. Fighter Command, now armed with something keener and swifter and more deadly to its foes than anything the last war ever saw. Speed is vital. Jets mean speed that takes a man and his machine nine miles in every minute, and more to come. That means new techniques on the ground, too. New methods of control. New operations. New radar eyes. <laughs> standards of human skill. The mass takeoff that launches a squadron of jets almost simultaneously into the air from a crowded, howling runway like angry falcons. is faster than the Spitfire, but the progress of development is also fast. The Meteor is to be replaced by new fighters such as the Swift.
and the P-1067, the fastest fighter flying today. Among the bombers, Anglo-American cooperation is very close. After the war, Britain decided to jump production straight from the Lincolns and the Lancasters to the jets. Meanwhile, to ensure a striking force at all times, the RAF manned these Washingtons, as we call the super fortresses. also provided bases for the United States Air Force, who operates such enormous airborne monsters as the B-36, most gigantic of bombers, a ten-engine battleship, six piston engines and four jets. And now the jet bombers of the RAF are coming along. The Canberra is coming into squadron service. A sleek thing more beautiful to the eye than to the ear, which can fly twice as fast as the Lincoln and twice as high. The RAF's tremendously powerful weapon to come is the Valiant, the new four-jet bomber, a magnificent example of British engineering. integrated world, we have at last found an integrated will for peace. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization means an interlocking efficiency, new to the history of this contending world. Now the mechanics of European defense are welded under General Eisenhower and his air chief, Air Chief Marshal Saunders, who has the task of coordinating the growing efforts of all our neighbor lands to build their air strength. So the air, which covers without frontier or discrimination the surface of our Europe, becomes the junction of our cooperative effort. The vampires fly over Holland. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization ignores the land frontiers so that each may be inviolate. Those who live below, anchored to the anxious ground, Watch the passage of the thing that means security to them and to us, and maybe to the world. Our contribution is ourselves and our brothers of the Commonwealth, the Canadians, the Australians, the New Zealanders, the South Africans. A glorious brotherhood of the air, a common element which is shared by all who breathe it and share a love of freedom. Freedom to be maintained by such roaring things as these. Together, always together, those who share the common sky of freedom must protect it together. Thank <laughs> you.